My name is Thelonious Stokes. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Um, I'm the, the brother of Satchel Stokes, the son of Vicky Stokes. Um, back at home, I'm, I guess, a tra not a fairly uh, non-traditional just approach to like youth. You know what I mean, I, um, I'm an oil painter, I'm a filmmaker. Um, my brother is, he himself is a musician, so we're fairly deep into the arts. Um, I don't really like to focus on negativity, so I guess that's it's interesting that I'm here because uh, it's even though it's kind of for a negative reason, it's for like a forward cause. So, due to um, heavy drug abuse and just I guess neglectful circumstances and environments, he just decided to act impulsively um, and almost kind of just. Uh, just really react impulsively to his environment. In 2000 and I believe 15, robbed a store and um, he didn't even really remember what he did. And uh, so he was locked up for about two years until December of 2016 when he was released. And um, only until recently he was out and he reoffended, doing the exact same thing uh, about a week ago. So that is why I'm here. That is uh, the reason why I'm in front of this camera. He is not. Zero services, zero support. Um, the farthest we could go when it comes to support was just saying I love him every day. And that was, uh, sometimes that felt like it was not really doing anything. And even though it's just, you, you hear that response, you hear I love you too, or something like that. It was just something, it was a lack of just communication. It wasn't, something just did not click. You could kind of see it in his eyes, but it's like it was just like so confusing as to why, um, like kind of behind the, the doors of just like ethic and morality or whatever, he was uh, still acting impulsively, still wanted to do drugs. So um, zero support, zero zero services. From what he told me, he learned uh, a whole lot of bad stuff. Pretty much, he pretty much just learned how to be. Uh, kind of a criminal, <laughs> basically. He learned, uh, he just learned the ins and outs of, of the Cook County Jail in Chicago, which uh, really didn't serve any good purpose. He, um, he came back just with just more knowledge about jail, which was interesting because I am an artist, so sometimes like, like I guess like, like specifics of just culture are always interesting. Simultaneously, it was just like, the knowledge was almost, he was informed so well about like just the layout of the county and just like uh, basic laws that it seemed like it could be potentially good, even though it was like, wow, did you talking about jail, you know what I mean? So it, at the end of the day, uh, what did he learn from the Cook County Jail? He said nothing. Yeah, so once again, I just feel like they're just kind of like recycling literal literally recycling children. So like maybe these kids, based on like the harshness of whatever they did, can potentially um, act and walk society in, I guess, a, a reasonable fashion. Potentially, at the end of the day, um, once they do go behind those bars, it's, it's always hard to, be the, to walk out the same person. Um, so, I honestly feel like, specifically my brother's case, he was just kind of like reacting to how he felt the world was acting towards him. So, in the day, that's how he felt about society. F you, really, at the end of the day. So, um, I get it. At the same time, it's always hard to empathize with somebody that robs a store. He is my brother, though, so I kind of have to empathize. So, at the end of the day, man, uh, the, just youth justice system, just the justice system in general is just, to me, is like a, a hell Disneyland, Disneyland and hell. It's the, uh, like devil's, the devil's boarding school at the end of the day. So what do you learn from the devil's boarding school? Probably have to just be like hot. That's, that's all I can really think about. So it's a little bit more lenient, like I'll say that. Um, being an adult and being incarcerated is, uh, pretty much asking to just be marked. They just, like they say, a menace to society. I've even heard them call my brother that before. And it was, uh, it was hard. 
because I'm like, wow, they're speaking to my brother. I'm seeing him just really not even him anymore. Like, a, like kind of like stripped of his personality, stripped of his just basic things that define him specifically on the outside. When you just see him with his hands behind his back or in the chain things, it's, it's weird, you know what I mean? At the same time, you, I just try not to look at him and just try to pay attention to the way what the judge is saying. Hopefully he's, he's deeming my brother, uh, I don't know the word, he's deeming my brother well to return into society, which is, to me, it's just like, end of the day, it's, uh, it's like, you're talking about my brother. He maybe did aggressively act to receive something. That's how I feel in the courts, in the, in the, like, in the moment of them speaking about my brother, the frustration of not being able to reach him or not being able to be like, Satch, come here and give me a hug. It's just the hardest thing in the world.